Hey everyone, Disappointed Giant here with a video about something I always love talking about, dead cells. I wanted to make this video to get into the mechanics behind the almighty combination of face flask and vengeance and why this easily attainable combination of items should have a place in your brutality build strategy. They work incredibly well together at any point during a run, but really shine toward the endgame on higher BC levels where damage is king. Face Flask is an active skill that was introduced in the Everyone Is Here update, which was version 2.6. At first glance, it's just an odd skill. It's located in a lore room in the Prisoner's Quarters, which is the game's first biome. If you're a new player, or starting a new save with a fresh file, Face Flask will show up at some point within maybe the first dozen or so runs, depending on how you're playing, as there's a set order in which the items from the Everyone Is Here update appear. So you find an unlocked Face Flask. You're excited to try out this new item, especially if you're a fan of Blasphemous and barely scrape through that game thanks to its Bile Vessel healing mechanic. Just like the Penitent one, when using this item you smash a vial against your head, you take 5 damage and... wait... that's it? The two main mechanics that make Face Flask a great item and an amazing pair with Vengeance are Affix Synergies and Multiplicative Damage. Synergies on an item are the colored words on affixes that grant additional damage or effects to an enemy that has that particular status effect. You'll see these as plus 60% damage to a bleeding target, or plus 100% damage to a target covered in burning oil. One of your best ways to maximize damage in Dead Cells is to find synergies between your items to grant extra passive damage boosts like this. Imagine you have a sword that does 100 points of damage to an enemy. If that enemy was afflicted with the bleed status effect, and the sword had the plus 60% damage to a bleeding target affix, the sword would hit for 160 points instead of 100, which is an additional 60%. This is a bit of a crude explanation, since Dead Cells DPS is calculated within a general range of damage instead of static damage number per hit, but we'll use this example to keep the math more understandable. Synergies stack and don't cancel out one another. So theoretically, you can find an item with both affixes of plus 60% damage to a bleeding target, as well as plus 80% damage to a poison target. If that same sword we were just talking about hit a target that was both bleeding and poison, and that sword had both bleeding and poison synergy, instead of hitting for the base of 100 points of damage, it would hit for 288. The reason why this number is so high is because damage bonuses in Dead Cells are calculated as multiplicative instead of additive. All right. It's time for some math, but I'll be as basic and descriptive as I can here. For multiplicative damage, the total damage value of something that does an extra 60% damage is that base value times 1.6. So the sword we were just talking about, you know, 100 damage, 100 times 1 1.6 is 160. Now if something's being calculated multiplicatively and it does both an extra 60% damage and an extra 80% damage. The total damage value can be found by multiplying the base damage of 100 by 1.6, so that's 60% extra for 160, and then multiplying that value by 1.8, which is 80% extra, leading to a total damage output of 288. This also explains why whenever you pick up a scroll, the damage multiplier gets higher and higher as it's taking your total damage and multiplying it by 1.15 every time you take an on-color scroll. The devs put this value right in the scroll selection screen so you can see how high your damage is getting as the game goes on. If Dead Cells used additive damage calculation instead, the affix's normal decimal value, so without the 1 in front of it, would be added together before the damage would be calculated. So in this example, it would be plus 60% or 0.6, plus 80% or 0.8, adding to a total of 1.4. Adding the number 1 to this value, which stands for the 100% damage of the item without any synergies, this is just the normal damage it deals, the total additive damage would be 100 times 2.4, or 240, which is a little bit less than 288. These numbers aren't too far off from one another since our base damage of 100 is pretty low, but as base damage values go up with higher gear, the gap between the different damage calculations grows exponentially. As a comparative example, Hades uses an additive system for its calculations, which can explain why sometimes it feels like damage might fall off late game, or it doesn't get going as quickly as you'd want at the beginning of a run. The stacks and bonuses don't carry as much weight as they would if it was multiplicative, which would likely break Hades in half. <laughs> anyway. You still here? 
The basics is that in Dead Cells, the more damage bonuses you can apply at once, the higher and higher the total damage output will be. The reason why Face Flask excels at this is that it can have multiple concurrent damage bonus affixes at once, and as we just learned, more synergies means more damage. At higher item levels, Face Flask can roll several affixes and almost all of them will provide the player with some kind of damage bonus potential. Whether it covers the ground around you with burning oil or creates a toxic cloud around you when the effect ends. So while at first glance Face Flask seems like kind of a weird item in a forced reference, it's actually really, really, really good. This is also why I will defend Emergency Door to the death. Face Flask is only one half of the combo though. Vengeance is a brutality mutation that grants damage reduction for 3 seconds and a percent based amount of bonage damage for 8 seconds after you take a hit. It starts at a 60% damage bonus with a single stat in brutality, and with a scroll count of 35, it will scale all the way up to 94%. This mutation is available from the very start of the game. At first glance, this is a solid mutation for a newer player to take as they're learning the rope, so as they inevitably get hit, as we all do and did, they'll have more damage output and will take less damage if they get hit while counterattacking. It's also arguably viable at any BC level in boss fights against some of the faster bosses with tricky attack patterns. Now, if there was only a way to safely take some damage to get Vengeance to proc, right? Right? Right. Vengeance takes effect when the player takes any damage, so when using Face Flash, that tiny 5 hit points worth of damage grants the player at least 60% extra damage for 8 seconds. Face Flask cooldown is 10 seconds, so this can be used repeatedly to get even more additive damage when stacking affixes and using weapons that have those synergies. The example above where the final damage value of that sword was 288, if using Vengeance at the entry 60% bonus, that value goes all the way up to 460. Whoa. When stacking synergies and using Face Flask to activate Vengeance, you can get some pretty high damage with relatively low effort. Press one button and all of a sudden your damage potential goes up both with synergies and the extra multiplicative damage. This combination can get even more wild if you use Corrupted Power in your other skill slot to get another 50% damage with even more affixes on top of your Vengeance bonus and your synergy bonuses, and you can use the combo mutation to get more damage with each successive hit, and if you use Spite Sword you'll do critical damage for 8 seconds and... yeah. Brief side note here. As far as I know, all the bosses in the game except for the servants have a damage cap of 15%, which means that no matter how much damage a single hit does to a boss, it will only do 15% damage even if it exceeds that amount of the boss's total HP. In my opinion, this is why it's great to use this combination with some of the quicker brutality weapons, since they can do multiple little hits with all this bonus damage and probably won't hit the boss damage cap. If you've ever seen a YouTube video where someone melts a Dead Cells boss in 10 seconds, it's usually with a faster weapon that does lots of little hits instead of a slower weapon that does a few big hits. Hopefully all of this math and this really long-winded explanation made some sense, and this video ended up being helpful in understanding Face Flask and seeing how it can go from being one of the oddest skills in Dead Cells to one of the strongest. If you're struggling to get more damage on your builds, then using this early game brutality combination can go a long way to get those numbers higher and to melt those boss health meters. Thank you for watching, and please leave a comment below if you have any follow-up questions, or if you have anything to add here that will be a good addition to the video or will help out the Dead Cells community. Good luck out there!